So two of the things while walking around the city that we just keep seeing and we we're like, what the heck is going on? One of them is a lot of the locals will smile at you and their teeth are like dark red and look really rotten and like slimy. Or even bloody. Or like bloody and then all everywhere around you people are just hawking fat loogies all over the ground. You have to watch your feet because people just spit at your feet. It is this thing that we looked up and it is called betel nut and it's like a version of chewing tobacco and all of them have it. It's really widespread across the country. It's actually a huge cause of oral cancer in the country. I think it's a pretty big problem, but it's, it's I think it kind of gives you like a little buzz like tobacco would, but it is all over the place and just loogies everywhere. There's not just loogies though, like the streets are actually stained red. There is a blob of it right here. See this blob? That is the spit. And it is everywhere. Everything you see here was once a fat loogie. Everything. <laughs> the other thing that you see a ton of is you'll be walking around and it's, I've mostly seen it on women but I've seen it on some men too. There's this white grayish paste that's rubbed all over the faces and we looked it up and I think it's called Tanaka. Tanaka or Tanaka. And it is both used as a cosmetic beautification, rubbed in circle shapes on the cheeks and then also sometimes on the nose. But then it also doubles as like a it's, sun protector. Yeah, it's used mainly for sunscreen, but it's also like decent for skin so you can use it if you have acne or like as an anti-inflammatory. But most people have it on their faces at some point during the day. Yeah, it's made of roots. I mean, even the guy that works in our hotel, he was making the paste in the bathroom this morning. Yeah, it's just, just grinding some bark onto this little rough plate and just rubbing it all over their faces. You'll learn something new every day. craziness begin. So I was doing some reading and this city is even bigger than I thought. The metro area has almost 8 million people. So we got a lot of walking ahead of us. We're gonna walk about two miles up the road. It should take us about 40 minutes and we're gonna first head to the Schwedegun Pagoda. Pagoda. <laughs> Hi babies. Hi guys. Hello. Hi. All right, we've made it to the Pagoda South Gate. Let's check it out. They're playing a Burmese jingle bells. <laughs> <laughs> Off with the shoes. How many times have we done this? A lot.
the Shwedagon Pagoda. Um, from what we've read online, it is the most sacred pagoda in all of Myanmar. It costs 10,000 chat to get in. There's so much more to explore. The actual grounds are huge. It's so beautiful from what we've seen already. And yeah, we're about to see more. The Ottoman Yaba Bawa Rebu Aditi Pandu Jali Patiya Sandra Shida Yurika Labano Nisa Yopi Tango Yiga Dugi Shi Yumi Naka Dushi Yumi Wesi Nema Dola Yomi Kato Kashi Kuyo Nanti So most of the stupa is under renovation, so you can't truly see how gold it really is, but it's still awesome. Up is the Bogyoki Ong San Market. I'm gonna check it out. Their market is split up in like different sections. So there's the jewelry, fabrics, clothing, fruit here in the middle. Also, pumelos in Asia are like three times the size of what you can find at yeah. home. So, like just slices and they're so good. It's not like a grapefruit. It's It's got the hint of bitterness of a grapefruit, but it, I think it's sweeter. It's sweeter, but also like the actual individual pieces of pulp are Huge. Yeah. Mm. So good. They're good. This place is really cool. It's pretty quiet. Usually when we're in a market, we can't even hear ourselves talk. And it's kind of quiet. Yeah. I like it. We're now in the souvenir section. It just changes every couple of yards. Meters. <laughs> A couple of meters. <laughs> Workers are barefoot, just pulling crap and garbage out of the gutters, and I'm just like, oh. oh. It's really strange because with all of the grunge, it's kind of beautiful. I can't describe it. Yeah, you look past the grunge. 
Yeah, you look past the grunge and there's still colors and the language is beautiful. It looks almost like music notes. I mean, it's really, really interesting. Oh my god, no! a reason. No. Every man for themselves. I always thought the traffic in Vietnam was like absolutely terrifying, but at least they like stay in a straight line for the most part. Drivers here are ruthless, will intentionally try and hit you. Yeah. It's funny. My adrenaline is at an all-time high. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> They're only there because people are feeding them. Why? gonna try our luck at a Yangon night market. I think there are several and night markets are all starting to look the same so we're gonna see if this one's any different. pitiful night market we've ever seen. I mean, and we've been to some small towns. Yeah, it really just doesn't have anything to offer. Uh. It's got food and that's about it. And it's like, usually it's vendor after vendor after vendor, but here it's like someone every 50, 75, 100 feet. It's like know. one vendor, then seven dark alleys. <laughs> one vendor, 13 dark alleys. <laughs> it's really bad. So we're gonna go wander back and see if we can find some dessert maybe or call it a night. Ooh. Dessert. It was a bust, but we got our ice cream and it was still an awesome day in Yangon.